Hello, Mad Cappers. How about we start this fabulous next season of sewing with a fabulous fashion cloche. Here, Ileana is demonstrating the woolen herringbone version that I made for her for spring. And it's decorated with a simple scarf that I'll show you how to make as well. But first, go to the website in the link below in the description to fetch your free pattern pieces. You have you have uh, three pages here and you don't need to leave any personal information to get them. Now I'm just taping together, matching those circles. So I folded over the uh, left edge of page two to make sure that I had that full half brim piece. And my top piece is going to be six panels with a rounded top. And a little hack that I did is I printed out a second set of pages one and two and I'm making a full brim version of this pattern so I don't need to worry about folding fabric or my pattern and matching pieces that way and another little trick I'll show you is that I just glue my pattern onto a sturdy piece of poster board and what I'm left with once once I finish cutting it out is a nice sturdy pattern piece that I can draw the outline for my brim for future hats over and over again. And it makes it really easy to do that. So I'll do the same thing with my top piece. And there's six pieces for the outer layer of our top and six pieces for the lining. And no matter what season, I'm using a quilting fabric as my lining. But first I'm going to steam these pieces well. This will be our brim fabric, a nice canvas polka dot and a black canvas for underneath the brim, on the inside of the brim. And I'm using two layers of the one-sided fusible medium weight interfacing. And I'm gonna set it up so I cut it all out at once. So I've got my sticky side of my interfacing facing the wrong side of my black under layer and the same on the polka dots. And I'll give it a good pressing like the instructions say. And now I'm going to trace my brim onto this fabric that already has the interfacing fused and my pieces are going to match perfectly. And I'm using a wax pencil. I'm, I'm working on a black canvas today. So my white wax pencil means that I can see these lines very clearly. And I'll pin them just to hold them while I cut. And then I'll cut through all the layers all at once. And this hat does not require a lot of fabric. All you need is about a third of a meter or a third of a yard. And you can use uh, an extra bit for your lining, some scraps from your, your quilting stash. Two pieces, two pattern pieces and a fabulous hat. And I've made this hat in corduroy, I've made it in polar fleece, I've made it in velvet. This is a, a heavy cotton twill. I'd say this is about a nine ounce twill that I'm using on the top layer and an eight ounce on the lower layer. But I've made it in light quilting fabric too and that medium weight one-sided fusible stabilizer interfacing really helps to level the playing field so the hat maintains this beautiful rounded shape. And I'm doing the same thing for my outer layer. I'm going to fuse each piece. So the sticky part of the fuse is, is facing the wrong side on both these layers and I'll get three pieces of the top from each side of this, but I'm gonna cut them out in twos all together. And what I really love about this hat is it has a real 20s flapper style vibe to it. It's quite retro. And of course, everything old is new again. There are some hat shapes that have never gone out of style over the years. This one, the fedora, to name a few, <laughs> or to name two. So I'm really happy that you can just sort of update a classic pattern by just your choice of fabrics. Polka dots are fun. So it's a very fun hat for spring and summer. And I'm cutting out the lining at the same time. So all these pieces are gonna match with any luck <laughs> when I sew them together. And I just clip on the first side that I cut just to hold the fabric layers together. 
and now I'll separate them. So the polka dots will be my outside layer and my butterflies are my lining. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do a lot of sewing panels together and I'll start by sewing them into twos. So two sets of two for the lining and the outside layer and leaving one set of two just to add a single piece to each half so that I'll end up with three pieces on two panels for the outer layer and the lining layer. I'm using my regular seam width, which is 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter, and my handy dandy magnetic seam guide to make those stitches perfect. And people ask me quite often what kind of thread that I use. I use a polyester thread for all of my hats. I find it just lasts longer than the cotton thread. It's stronger and I just find it easier to work with, but you can use a cotton thread if you'd like. And now I'm gonna open up those seams on those two pieces that I've just created for the lining and the two pieces for the top layer. And I'm going to sew those seams flat with a top stitch or a double stitch up one side of the seam and back down the other side. And on the inside, it should be nice and flat and comfortable. And I'm gonna do this for all of those four pieces that I've just created. So that's two pieces for the lining and two pieces for the outside layer. And we repeat that top stitching on the outside layers as well. The exact same thing down one side of the seam and we pivot at the end and come back up the other and now we're going to turn those two section panels into three section panels and we're going to first start by sewing one piece of the two pieces that we have left to one side and then do the exact same with the other piece to the other side and now we have two three sections pieces that we will sew together but first we'll do the same for the lining and of course we're going to top stitch these seams flat as well. A lot of top stitching folks. Turn the tunes up loud and, and sing at the top of your lungs and <laughs> just get into the groove of lots of top stitching. It's very satisfying when this hat is finished to see what you've created. And you have a little area where they cross at the top, but that's going to disappear on the right side of that crossing point because that will disappear into the seam when we sew these two, three sections together with one long seam. Now, some of you have made probably some of my other cap patterns, and this is really like a cap top. It's just a little bit deeper than the caps that we've made on the channel so far. If you don't want this hat to be so deep, you can cut off a little bit at the bottom, but make one the way that I have given you the pattern, and then you can make the adjustments for your second and third. And I'm just gonna finish off the lining now, sewing those two, three sections together. So now I have a finished section without the top stitching for the lining and for the top. And I will do that top stitching now. And I'm going right across the top and over the top to the other side and back again. And looking inside, it looks beautiful. And I'm just folding it in half to mark a center front and the center back. And my, I'm putting my center front in the middle of a panel, but I know in the industry, a lot of caps put the center front as the, the side seam of a panel. So you can decide how you want it. It's an even number, so it'll look well, it'll look great either way. All right, now we're gonna get ready to sew the brim and I'm gonna sew a seam in between those two yellow pins. And I've got the right sides together, so I'm sewing on the wrong side, the side that has the fused interfacing, and I'm using my regular seam width with the help of my handy-dandy magnetic seam measure guide and some pins, of course. And I've left those two ends open so that I can finish off the back seam of my brim in a very tidy, neat way 
So I'm gonna use again this, the regular seam width and I'll sew the right sides of the solid black together and the right sides of my polka dot together. I will open up the, those two seams and press them flat with my fingers. And then I'm gonna finish now that outer edge seam of my brim and I'll sew over top of the seams that I just made, keeping those um, edges of the seam flat. Now you can clip if you want, going around the curve to make that turn easier. I prefer to use my serger and it just compresses the seam. And now I'll turn it right side out and I'll spend some time rolling that seam edge so that it's right at the very center of the very edge all the way around the brim so that there's the same amount on either side of the seam at the very edge. And once I have it rolled out, I can sort of feel it with my fingers that it's rolled right to the edge. I just pin it or clip it as I prepare it for some top stitching. And I'm gonna top stitch. It's a decorative stitch, but it also holds that, that those pieces in place all the way around about a half an inch or 13 millimeters. And this is a preference thing, so if you want to do two rows or if you want to do a narrow row, it's up to you. And now I'm just closing up the edge with a seam that's very close to the edge, maybe a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. And I'll cut a center notch for the center inside of my, of my brim, and I'm matching it with the center notch of my front of my top piece, and I'll match the notch that I created in the back of my top piece with the seam at the back of the brim. And now I'm just going to ease it in and work all the way around with my regular 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter seam width and sew those two pieces together, right sides together. So the polka dots are matching the polka dots. And there you can see the beginning of what will be a beautiful hat. Now, I'm going to apply this lining layer as a layer that has a little opening at the back so that we can turn it right side out and do a seam along that edge that will be mostly inside the lining layer of the hat. And I'll show you another way to do the lining after this hat is finished. The, there's a second option for lining that's included in the actual paid version of this pattern. We do have a pattern that is available in three adult sizes and it includes a different lining option. So now I've left a little opening along that back panel and I matched all those panel seams together and the notches. And now I'm going to turn it right side out And voila, the big reveal. It's a lovely hat, but we're not finished. Now you can hand sew that opening closed if you wish. I just sort of tack across the back because we're going to put a scarf on next. And that will close up some of that as well. So I just slowly go across the back and try to sew on the seam that's already there. And if you get a bit of sewing on the top layer, don't worry, the scarf is gonna hide that. Yay. And we'll put a scarf all the way around and we'll just finish it with a really cute little knot. This is the scarf that I use for all of my summer hats, including some of my straw hats. Sometimes I use it in the full width and put it through a buckle. But in this case, we're gonna fold it in half lengthwise and sew it together to make a narrower scarf or a double layer scarf. And we'll leave a little opening in the middle for turning it right side out. And I like to just pin it first before I get started. And we'll leave that little bit open. So 
So I'm using my uh, standard seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter to make the scarf, but if you want to do something narrower, that's fine too. Or if you want to use a heavier fabric, that's fine as well. I like this voile fabric. This has a little bit of a textured crinkle and I pull with my left hand on the other side of my foot just to help guide it through because it is a very fine, thin fabric. And you don't need to worry about closing that opening that we're leaving because we'll sew over it when we attach it to the hat. But the Savoyal Crinkle scarf material is really, really nice to work with. It really um, fits nicely on the hats. It conforms to the shape quite easily. And it always looks nice. So I'll just sort of trim off those corners. And then I'm going to turn it right side out using my very big knitting needle. And I'm going to give it a bit of a press on my lovely monster pressing mat that I just adore. And there's a link for that in the description below if you're interested in getting one yourself. I've just put mine in a pillowcase, which helps to protect it. And I'm just putting that seam, that bottom edge seam on one side, and that's gonna be my wrong side. And I'm just pushing it up to the part of my cloche where the brim is gonna meet the top of the hat but the sewing is gonna be on the brim side of the place where they meet. And I'm switching my foot to use my, my narrow presser foot so I can get right up close. And there is quite a bit of fabric um, on the left side of my foot compared to the right side. So it's a very easy job to do this step. It just wants to sew where it should sew naturally. And you can see the seams going all the way around, but I I didn't go all the way around. I left a little opening for tying the knot and I placed it sort of at the center, just towards the front of the hat. But again, you can place it right at the front if you want or closer to the front than I did. Just have fun playing with it before you sew it on. And then I just, in, I'm just covering up the seam that I just made. And I will tie it in just a standard knot. And then I'll just work on the ends of my knot to make them look like a bow. And there you have it. Easy, right? And you can even make it even more awesome by adding a sparkly pin. What's not to love about this hat, right? Now, for those of you who want to buy the full sewing pattern in three adult head sizes with the written instructions, it's available for a nominal charge from our website and from our Etsy store. And it also includes a template for that scarf piece that I used, which you can use for other hats. And it also includes this optional lining. And this is the lining that I use for my caps that I sell on my website, as well as my straw hats. Uh, this one's just a little bit longer because this cloche is a little bit deeper, but you will find this lining very useful if you decide to buy the pattern. And I'm just notching a center front and a center back on the top and a center front on the lining piece. And the seam will be the center back. So my regular seam width, and I will top stitch that seam flat as well. Up one side of the seam and back down the other. And then I'd like to just clip a little bit all the way around, just cutting into some of that interfacing, just to give it a little bit more of a stretch or a, a little bit easier to ease those two pieces together. So I'm gonna match this back seams together with a pin or a clip. And then I will match the front seam, the front notch together with a pin or a clip. And I'm gonna use 
uh, my regular width seam and sew from inside the hat with the lining facing down on the feed dogs because it doesn't have any stabilizer so we don't want it to stretch while we're sewing and I'm just going to work all the way around and for a lot of my hats you know that I like to put my finishing seam at the very top where it's not going to bother us and so the same is true in this case with this lining and I'm just going to ease it in all the way around the band part of the lining matching the two notches and then just making sure that it's going to fit and i'll use my regular seam width to sew them together wrong sides together so the right side is facing out and my raw edge is going to be on the outside and then you can finish that edge afterwards with a serge like i do or you could finish it with a zigzag or you could use a pair of pinking shears and make a, a ragged edge so that it doesn't fray. But either way, this is a fairly easy way, an effective way to finish the hat. But if you wanted to put it together first so that you're sewing the top to the band before you sew the band to the hat, you can do it the same way as we just did with the six panel lining and leave a little bit of an opening at the back and turn it right side out when you're finished and then hand sew that opening closed. And here it is on that beautiful woolen herringbone. And this is a summer version. It's a cotton linen fabric from Spoonflower and I've just done a little bias edge when I joined the top and the band together and added a bow. There's lots of things that you can do to make this hat special, beautiful, but I'm just showing you a really easy way with a simple scarf and a two-piece pattern. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you liked the video, how about giving us a thumbs up? If you really like the video, how about subscribing to the channel and joining us next time for another fabulous hat lesson and pattern. Hopefully you have a happy week sewing. Make lots of these hats. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.